got your picture. Oh, okay. Well, I'd like to welcome you all on this, on the behalf of the Space Walk of Fame, the Jim Nick Party at the reunion here. And uh, what we're trying to do at this place is take oral history. Now, we've been doing this before, and uh, we have over a hundred different people who we've interviewed and uh, put on the tape and the video. And uh, those uh, are available to people who want to do research and just want to be interested in you know, what the granddad do. <laughs> so uh, after this is done, uh, uh, you can bring in uh, the grandkids and sit them here and watch them on TV. And, uh, and uh, we normally type up the transcripts of this and uh, we will let you see it before we put it into our final. Uh, I would like to welcome you all. Uh, some of you uh, I have known in the past. <laughs> some of you I've probably been in the blockhouse with. Uh, are you all from McDonald? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sir, time. So undoubtedly, we were, I, I recognize you. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be. <laughs> hey, anyway. I talked with John this morning and got intimately familiar with it. But his background and everything. So I'd like to open up and just uh, uh, just give me a, a thumbnail sketch of uh, what you did and who you worked for and, uh, on, on the Gemini program. Uh, Ray, would you start, please? Yes, I'm Ray Tucker. I worked for the uh, ground support equipment, electronic. I was the one that was appointed to do the wiring from the blockhouse to the blockhouse to the, the spacecraft. Okay. Other than responsible getting the pad completely ready. Yeah, okay. So you were here from the start of activations on 19 then? Uh, I started on the Mercury Project activation of pad 5. Oh, okay. Then I went to 14, then 19. And you were working for that time? Right. And my, uh, my supervisor was Jim Jackson. Uh, I've had some very Trying moments in those times. Oh, I bet you have. But uh, my most important asset of the program was to know that I did the job right when that spacecraft went out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you get to know the astronauts? Yes, we did. I knew all seven of the original astronauts. And at this present time, I do seminars in St. Louis schools on the Mercury and Gemini program. There you go. Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Also got a guy here that helps me once in a while. He's Clay Flynn, and he helps me do the job once in a while. Okay, Clayton, what, what, what do you want to add to that? Tell us about yourself. I'm uh, Clayton Flynn from McDonnell, okay. and uh, I was the engineering propulsion supervisor for uh, Gemini and Mercury. Okay. And. Uh, I'm happy to say that there are two other engineers here who were part of my group, and I'd like to say they were a very valuable asset to my group. I'm sure they were. Uh, where do you live now, Clayton? I live in Chesterfield, Missouri, which is about 25 miles west of uh, St. Louis. Okay, okay. Robin, uh, tell us about yourself. I'm Robin Wagner, and I work for McDonald. I, uh, not only worked on Gemini, but worked on Mercury. I came in on uh, Scott Carpenter's flight, and I worked for Bob Lindsay and Bud Powell. I I wrote the mechanical procedures, uh, wrote the uh, hypergolic procedures for this group over here on this <laughs> side, and uh, servicing the spacecraft, and uh, also wrote uh, the couch procedures. So I got to know a lot of the astronauts personally. Um, and the pyrotechnics. I also wrote pyrotechnics oh. procedures. So uh, got a uh, rich history. I uh, was also talking to a guy who was in my group, which was Mike Williams, which was the launch countdown writer. And uh, he wished he could be here, but uh, his, his health and his wife is even worse than his. He lives in, in uh, North Carolina. And uh, he said he could not make it, but he would love to have been here. Bud Powell uh, was one of the best procedures guys I ever saw. <laughs> we had good guys, but not Bud Powell. I worked for Bud Powell, uh, not only Mercury and Gemini, but also on Apollo. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I live here in uh, West of Cocoa. Okay. John, uh, why don't you 
Well, as Clay has said, I was a member of his propulsion systems engineering group. Uh, we had a, a great group, I tell you. I've never worked with a better group of guys. Uh, not only got the job done, but we had fun doing it. And that, that makes a difference. And uh, Robin, he's read some of the procedures I've written that you might say uh, graded them. <laughs> but no, uh, Robin did a, did a great job of helping to keep us straight and keep things in line and by the numbers. And you currently live in Tennessee? Yes, sir. Uh, we've been there off and on for a number of years, uh, associated with the Oak Ridge National Lab. Now, was there a period, was this after Jim now that you worked for Pan Am, or did you work Pan Am before you? Pan Am, Pan Am was kind of the stepping stone that uh, brought me to McDonald. They used to bring the uh, hydrogen peroxide trailer down to our area to have it serviced with 90 percent and uh, got to know these guys real well and one day they said hey have you ever thought about putting in an application with McDonald and I said no and he said well uh, we'd like for you to think about it and I said whoa that sounds great I'd love to get aboard that team so I did and was fortunate enough to be hired. But, uh, Wait, how many years were you with McDonald? Uh, 35. 35. I came down originally with the Mercury team in, in that group, right? 1960, right. Have you read Lugin's book? Uh, yes. Yeah. I learned a lot by reading that book. Uh, Charles, tell us. Well, I was with three good guys right here. Clay, he controlled me. John <laughs> protected me. <laughs> <laughs> That was a and job. You, you were out there in the blockhouse. Right? Yeah, I was a propulsion engineer. Yeah, okay. and, right. And uh, anyway, uh, like John said, whenever I started out with Mercury and then went into Gemini, and that's where John come on board, and we made a great team together, and then whenever he moved to the next level, I followed him. Yeah, okay. So otherwise, uh, you know, we had a... Did you stay with McDonald all your career? No, sir. I stayed there until uh, Opala, and then uh, I worked with Grumman on the Lunar Lander. And then whenever everything probably was going downhill, I said, let me go north to Mayport. <laughs> okay. And, and you finished out here in Florida? Right? Oh, I'm, I haven't left Florida. I'm, I've retired in just west of... Uh, of Pensacola, it's a little town they call Lee, and it's right on the Florida line, okay. right on the bay. Yeah, it's on 98. That's where you live now. Right? Yes, sir. right down Hurricane Alley. That's where. Well, uh, uh, we're glad to have you all here. Uh, what's what's the one shot or the one launch that you all remember? What uh, best of all? <laughs> well, I wasn't here on the full Gemini. After I got the complex all ready, uh, I got put back to St. Louis to go back on the mechanical and electrical design of it. But the, best, the most scaring one I had was on the Mercury. When the retro rocket went off <laughs> instead of the, the booster. It raised up about four inches and set back down. So I think that was the most scaring moment that I ever had. Anybody, you'd be scared. There, there was nobody in the spacecraft at that time. No, it was a toilet plate. But it was was scary whenever that went up and then came back down. I wasn't in the blockhouse. I was on a, a truck about a mile away from it, and that tower came down about 150, 200 yards from us. Oh my! So that's. Reason why I know it was scary. Oh yes, sir. I know. But a lot of my time was very hard time. But we always wanted to do the job right, and everyone on the Mercury project that I ever worked with or anything else was really great. And also the Gemini. As long as I was on the Gemini program, I had no problems whatsoever. Okay. And uh, I just wish we'd get back to those times instead of what we got now. <laughs> 
Robin, how about you? What do you remember? Was the one outstanding launch or spacecraft crew or something like that that you think about when you think of the Jim program? Well, I, I guess the most thrilling was mine uh, when I first came to work, and that was with Scott Carpenter, and and just the uh, excitement of being able to work with the space program and uh, being a part of it, and it was all kind of amazing. I'm a old farm boy, and I came here uh, from a, uh, to the space center from the service to teaching, and then uh, on to the space center, and. Uh, ever experiencing anything like that and working with the engineers and so forth. It was a wonderful experience and I guess I just to try to absorb everything I could. Mm -hmm. So you don't recall any particular? All of them were about the same. About the same thing. Uh, were, were any of you in the blockhouse when uh, we were trying to launch six and it shut down? It wasn't in the blockhouse but uh, back in support and we were all aware of it and uh, that was a rather rem remarkable memory there. Yes. <laughs> because you had to, mm. we gave it such a short schedule to uh, right. adhere to, to remove, defuel, uh, resurface the seven, and then launch six to, for the uh, uh, target uh, vehicle. Do you recall the, up to six, up to vehicle six, we used to run a test, uh, which you guys would get all of the load propellants and everything in the spacecraft and even put the ordnance in. And on the launch vehicle, we loaded propellants and everything. We let the erector down. Uh, we went to, it was, we had the range up, you know, we interfacing with the range and, and checking out. It was just like a launch except we didn't launch, you know. And we call it, a, we call it, Mark called it, the wet box simulated launch. But yeah, it was a simulator. And uh, do you recall uh, on Vehicle 5 that we couldn't get the erector to come back up, okay? <laughs> well, yeah. The guys were in the spacecraft. Yeah. Yes. Tell us, can you remember that particular instance? Mm -hmm. uh, anything in particular about I can't. I just remember it happened, happened and, and yes, so yeah. I, I think it was about a half a day were before you. Were you nervous about this? Were you nervous about the astronauts? Well, we're always concerned yeah. when they're on top yeah. of that booster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember Wally Sherrar saying that they came within a heartbeat of, punching, of out. punching out. Yeah. yeah. And, and then he reconsidered when he thought about the 600 foot per rate, the acceleration, you know, that he would experience and they'd probably incur more injury that way than, you know, but hopefully they did, and, and thankfully they didn't have to. I talked to Wally Sherrard about that particular incident later, and uh, I asked him, why didn't you do it, you know, and he said, well, he said, I just didn't feel like I had to. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he made the right choice. Yeah, he did. Right. Yeah, right decision. Now, that was a mission rule, as I recall. Should he that he received the liftoff signal, and, but he didn't feel any acceleration, so the engine was hot, and that's the mission rule is to get out. Are there any other incidents? Do you remember interfacing much with the Martin guys there? Well, we. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to to some extent, and you know, in varying capacities. But the thing that I guess that comes to my mind most of all that Clay and others here were involved in was when Jiminy Two, uh, you started the booster, and I think lost hydraulic uh, pressure, yeah. and it, and again uh, had to shut down. And here we are sitting there with our pyrotechnic valves uh, having been activated and the propellant down to the injector valves. And they said, whoa, we got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we went in and uh, after much deliberation and working out schedules and realizing that it would take considerable time to do a normal recycle of taking a spacecraft down, take it back to Mila and to, you know, deservice and reservice it and bring it back to the pad, we ended up freezing the propellant lines with liquid nitrogen and 
changing yeah. out the pyro valves right there. Yeah, I remember. And I had a cartoon of, of which uh, I wish it was still in good shape, but uh, anyway, a picture of Clay and I with our white uh, white room garments uh, singed and uh, spots on our face and and one of us saying to the other said boy that change in the pyrotechnic valves a piece of cake wasn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember that well if we hadn't had gunner <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, that, that, you did some heroic things there on the space craft you know, so, uh, I'm trying to think of things that went on, you know, that I can recall that might have been lost. You know, one thing that happened with John and myself, we was running integrated tests. You remember that mm -hmm. night that the line ruptured and uh, the, the guys on the pad with the escape suits and all on, and I don't know if it was Charlie Porter and put his finger over the end of the line to keep the fuel and all in because he couldn't see anything and they was... And John said, do you know what's going on? I was sitting next to him. I said, no. And then I believe it was Charlie Porter says, well, we can't see anything, but I got my finger over the leak. Had to be Charlie Porter or Charlie Thompson. Thompson, one yeah. of those guys. Those guys were always there what you needed. Them. Yeah. Right, and we finally got everything, mm -hmm. you know, downloaded and secured. And I believe that... He had to go and wasn't it, did it burn completely through his escape suit and his thumb and all? I, I didn't remember that part. Part of it, yeah, yeah. or something like that. Uh, were any of you there for the uh, vehicle uh, uh, four launch? Mm -hmm. Any of you in the blockhouse? I wasn't in the blockhouse, but I was Did, did you all have, did uh, McDonald have any special uh, training and certification uh, that you had to do to, to be able to do your job? Oh, yeah. Escape suit. Oh, yeah. Uh, person. For example, uh, on the, on the uh, launch vehicle, we carried a card, right, with us and said we were certified, trained, well, and all this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know what these did. I was certified all the way. Had to be a NASA certified solder and for an insp uh, to inspect it. Okay. And I had to teach soldering school for yeah. the technicians. Okay. So that's yeah. the only part that I had to do. Okay. As John mentioned earlier, uh, we had a really good group, one of the better ones. And uh, the guys were always up for a challenge. And uh, one of the challenges that we had was to come up with the decontamination procedures for the uh, spacecraft. And John was one of the lead engineers in that area, and uh, he was also responsible for training all of the engineers that were to uh, fill in and uh, participate in that operation. Did you all go back and... Uh... Did you cycle from here to back to St. Louis and pick up the spacecraft and help sell it off there in St. Louis and then bring it down here? Did, did you participate in that? Yes, we did. I know that Charlie Morris, uh, he was with NASA, you know, he went back and participated in that. Did, did, did you know Charlie? Do you remember Charlie from the Just know him, that's yeah. it. But the uh, decontamination procedure I'm talking about are the downrange when the spacecraft landed, yeah, downrange, okay. and you had to decontaminate it, and bring it back. Did, did any of you go port. down range to uh, receive the spacecraft when it when it landed in the water, or be there to advise the government on uh, retrieving it or anything? John, yeah, yeah, I was. I it was with. Uh, we would fly out of Patrick with our equipment, as Clay mentioned, to decontaminate and basically safe the spacecraft. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. And we would always end up meeting someone like Chick Stucka and, and others, or if it was at Mayport, the NASA engineer would probably be John Stovecipher. 
<clears throat> Stone Cipher who uh, would uh, often, you know, be there to, uh, particularly to when the press would come and want to interview someone, he was the person that most often. Were there did any that. unusual incidents? If not, you would be downrange, it would be on the on the ship, right? Well, no, sir. We flew down in C-130. It, they would dispatch one out of Charleston. Well, where did you do the decontamination? At on the dock at the pier. They uh, would offload the spacecraft like Jiminy Two, for example. We went to. Uh, Roosevelt Roads Naval Air Station in Puerto Rico, and then most of the de you know contamination work was done at Mayport Naval Air Station in Jacksonville. Oh, okay. And there the carriers would come in and they would offload it onto pier side, and we would take it over then and uh, do our thing. But uh, were there any unusual incidences that you can recall? Well, some memorable ones, particularly uh, Jiminy Four with. Uh, you know, Jim McDivitt and Ed White, who yeah. had just walked, you know, done the spacewalk. That was the first spacewalk. And, and rather than fly off the carrier like a lot of them did, they elected to stay aboard. So when they came in, and it was the carrier Intrepid, which is at Pier 86 in New York now, is a air and space museum. Oh. And uh, it pulled up along uh, the side of the pier. And of course, the uh, band turned out, the governor of Florida was there, who was Governor Burns at the time. Boy, that dates us, doesn't it? And uh, anyway, uh, uh, Jim and, and Ed came down uh, off the side of the ship and uh, they rolled out what they could of uh, what you might call a red carpet, and welcomed them. And uh, so that you know was a special occasion rather than just show up and here's the spacecraft. Okay, guys, go do your work. Yeah. Well, that, that must have been memorable for you. Yeah. I, well, actually, one time, uh, whenever the WASP picked up, you remember, it yeah. went into Boston and we went to South Weymouth. Oh, in the winter time, and can you imagine? I had all your summer clothes. That's right. I had everything because I was rigged up for the tropics, you know. Yeah. And. Uh, and it was uh, quite a feat up there whenever it was in December, zero, and uh, of course they had to transport it from the, I would say, near Logan Airport at yeah. Bo to South Weymouth. And of course back then, you know, it stopped the traffic and all, and you felt like you, <laughs> you was in a, a great uh, convoy. Well, that's a good story. Yeah, that's a good story. Anything else that you fellows want to add to this that you'd like to go down in history? I think I'd like to say is that the space program was great. Uh, had a lot of good memories. Yeah. Awful lot of hard work and oh, yeah. a lot of dedication by a lot of uh, people. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming, and uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you later. I hope you'll all stay for the club playoffs this afternoon. Very much, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, socialize later. Thank you again for coming. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Welcome. Our pleasure. <laughs>